Today we're talking about leaf structure and function, and this is a uh, lesson for Biology 3U, and hopefully this will help clarify a little bit about leaf structure. Okay, um, when we start talking about leaves, we need to look at um, their roles. Okay, so in a plant, the leaf's primary function is photosynthesis. Okay, so, and if you remember from grade 10, when we sort of hit a little bit about photosynthesis, um, photosynthesis is um, a chemical reaction where you have carbon dioxide mixing with water, and it produces glucose, which is C6H12O6, and oxygen, okay? So that's glucose. And so when you look at this whole process, and you need it in the presence of light. Okay, because photosynthesis is a endothermic reaction, and so you need the input of energy for this to operate. And so when you're looking at um, a leaf, and if its primary function is photosynthesis, you want to have a leaf that is um, structured so that it can do this. So a leaf needs to do it needs to be able to capture the light okay it needs to be able to um, get enough water and it also needs to exchange gases So it needs access to carbon dioxide and to release oxygen. And it also needs to move glucose to store it. To store and to use, actually, because you might be using it if it's growing, things like that. So when you, when you look at the leaf, you have to think about, okay, it's photosynthetic. Its goal is for photosynthesis. So it needs to be able to capture the light. It needs to get water because there needs to be water um, coming in for the actual um, chemical reaction and it also needs carbon dioxide to come in so we have to remember how is a leaf structurally set up and through evolution how has it improved itself so that um, it will be maximizing its use okay so when you're thinking about that we're going to look at um, we're going to look more at a dichotomy a dicot leaf. Okay. And in a dicot leaf, you want to look at um, structures to maximize photosynthesis. And if you remember from a previous lesson, you want to maximize photosynthesis, but you also want to minimize water loss okay because water you can't move to your water so it has to make sure that wherever the leaf is and the plant that it's actually being able to minimize the water loss it loss and the maximize the photosynthesis okay so when we look at a leaf um, initially um, if you did the cross section Going to quickly draw the Roddy sketch and then uh, oh, let me just try that again. Sorry. And along the bottom. And we will just throw in
vascular bundles, okay? So when we're looking at um, the leaf cross section, what you have along the very top is the cuticle. Okay, it's usually waxy. Okay, that's when you look at the leaf and it looks really shiny. You have that. Um, and then the upper epidermis. And then you have the palisade mesophyll. And then along here, you have the um, spongy mesophyll. And vascular tissue. which includes the xylem and the phloem. And then you have the lower epidermis. And you have a stoma, or we'll do pleural stomata. Okay, so those are the holes. And the specialized cells on either side are the guard cells. Okay, so when you're looking at the cross section of the leaf, what you see is basically at the top you have the cuticle, then you have the upper, upper epidermis, and then the palisade mesophyll. The reason I did the palisade mesophyll in green is it's where most of the photosynthesis happens. Okay, you have photosynthesis happening primarily in the palisade mesophyll. And if you look at a leaf from the top view, okay, I'm just going to do the dicot leaf here. Um, it's a flat blade. It's usually shiny on top and it's not nearly as shiny on the bottom. And so um, you wanna make it as efficient as possible. So the more cells that you can have with chloroplasts here, the more photosynthesis you can have, okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We're gonna look at a couple of the, the things to maximize photosynthesis and to minimize water loss. Again, keeping the palisade mesophyll as your primary location for photosynthesis. Having a waxy cuticle, um, we'll, we'll get to that, sorry. The vascular tissue, it's the location where water is coming in and where the products of photosynthesis go. It's also um, a location where there's areas for gas exchange. So if we go to the next slide and you think of photosynthesis happening um, in the layer here, okay? So you have photosynthesis, so it needs water and it needs carbon dioxide and we have the sun shining up here. And so where's the water coming from? Well, the water's coming from the xylem, which is in the um, vascular bundle. So the xylem brings the water in, okay? And it releases it into the spongy mesophyll area. The carbon dioxide, well, it's coming in from the atmosphere. And so as long as the stomata are open, you have um, your carbon dioxide coming in through your stomatal openings, okay? And so as long as you have water coming up through the xylem and carbon dioxide going in, you have uh, photosynthesis taking place. And if photosynthesis is taking place, you also have the products being formed. So oxygen is being formed. And glucose is, I'm just gonna use a G as glucose. Okay, so I'll say G equals glucose. And so what happens is, as the glucose is forming, it's going to go into the phloem. Okay, and the phloem is the other part of the vascular bundles. So glucose is going to go to the phloem. Oxygen, well, oxygen is going to leave 
the same way the carbon dioxide came in on the underside of the plants, okay? And in one of the next lessons, we talk about how water comes up the xylem, but you have to remember that as water is coming in, you want to prevent water loss. If you have a lot of water sitting out and the sun is shining on the water, the water will want to evaporate. So when you think of all the water that's coming into these cells, the sun up here is going to try and evaporate it. Well, the water's not going to be able to evaporate if water can't penetrate. And that's why you have the waxy cuticle. The waxy cuticle is basically kind of like a transparent wax sitting on top so the sun can penetrate, but the water, if it tries to evaporate, it isn't allowed and it basically stays in. So the waxy cuticle prevents water loss. And so when you look at plants that have a, a very waxy outer coating, that's usually to prevent the water from escaping and you're keeping and now you're, you're preserving your water, okay? And so as we go into the next topic, to pull the water up, it's actually called transpiration. And so water actually evaporates out through the stomata as well. So as long as your stomata are open, you're going to have water loss through that. And that's okay because you need that to bring the water up. But that's in a future lesson talking about um, transpiration and water movement. Okay, so hopefully this kind of makes sense just looking at the dicot leaf, whereas the leaf has been designed, not designed, sorry, it is evolved um, to make it really good for photosynthesis. And that's the quick little lesson on leaf structure. If you have questions, please make sure um, you feel free to contact me.